Hey, I'm Caleb from Caleb's Aviation, and this is the first ever 747-400 ever built right here at the Delta Flight Museum. In this video, I'm going to take you on a detailed tour of it. Let's go and check it out. Lufthansa is the only airline that still flies 400s, unfortunately. Walking around this 747, I was just struck by how huge it was. This 747 is so amazing. And I get to do something I've never been able to do. Walk underneath the 747. Have you ever done that? I also didn't realize this 747-400 had the blue underbelly of Delta. I didn't think they had that. Who knew? This is unbelievable. I am literally underneath the Boeing 747-400. And honestly, I'm surprised. It's still pretty tall. I can't touch it if I try. This was the first 747-400 ever built by Boeing, and it was a test aircraft for many years. It was later then acquired by Northwest Airlines, the launch customer for the flight. Out in the airplane graveyard, you saw that TWA 747-100. The 400s were much newer. But they're still really old than nowadays compared to the new ones like the 747-8. This was pretty amazing to see up close and personal, right next to the engine. But soon, it was time to get on board this 747. We're going up on this 747. Let's check it out. At the time when I recorded this, masks were still required on board the 747, since it's part of a museum exhibit. Famous parts of the 747. This is the rear pressure bulkhead. This is very incredible to see. This unfortunately took down a Japan Airlines 747 in 1985. It shattered due to improper repairs. Inside the 747, again, we have these cutout areas. All these systems and cables and wires you see were to control the plane. Nowadays, most planes just have miles and miles of electrical wires and not physical cables that move the controls. This area down below is where the fuel tanks and other systems would be on this 747. It's definitely unique to have a window under your feet, that's for sure. Oh, here from Joe Sutter. I cannot look at a 747 without seeing it as a living piece of technological sculpture. A winged trophy dedicated to the men and women who put their hearts and souls into connecting and building it. Northwest Airlines Flight 85 had the problem because the two rudder panels that are supposed to be separated here were stuck in the position. And since they were stuck that way, they had no effective way to turn the airplane. Landing in Anchorage was a miracle that it made it. And of course you have all these other schematics of the spars, the winglets. This 747 was just full of exhibits and things displaying all the history and important information about it, as it was a very special 747. Flew to Atlanta after logging 61 million miles and carrying 4.9 million passengers. This 747-400 uses Pratt & Whitney engines. It flew for Northwest from 1989 to 2006 as the very first 747-400 ever built. It was a test aircraft before that. Its first flight was on April 29th of 1988. She holds 376 passengers, two pilots, and 11 flight attendants. She can go 7,365 miles on a tank of fuel, holding 57,285 gallons, cruising at 564 miles per hour. The 747-400 became known as the high-tech jumbo jet because of improvements that took advantage of computer and digital technologies. 
This model featured a glass cockpit, analog dials and gauges were replaced with digital screens, and advanced systems that allowed the 400 to fly with a two-person flight crew instead of needing three. Fuel tanks were also put in the tail, and six tall winglets enabled them for fuel modifications. This model came in a freighter version and the 747 passenger version. This model sold as many as all other 747 models combined, the Dash 400 did. And then, of course, there's some special ones, like the 747 freighter, which was the one that has the large nose that would open up to load cargo. And then you had the special ones like 747-100s and SPs that were converted to the shuttle carrier aircraft. My friend Paul recently made a video going around the shuttle carrier aircraft in Houston, Texas. I'll leave a video of that below. There's also Sophia, which has just now moved all the way, all the way to the Pima Air and Space Museum. She was just retired. There's also the 747 Dreamlifter, which if you keep watching the channel, we'll see some of those later on in this trip. And of course we have the VC-25, the Air Force One model of the 747-200 that first flew in 1985. Walking around this 747 was absolutely incredible. Between the scale and the size and the history of the 747, especially flying with Delta, not just the 747-400, but all of their 747 operations throughout the years. As I'm based in Detroit, I'd often see Delta 747s as Detroit was a primary hub for 747-400s heading to Asia. I'd also see Northwest ones prior to the mergers. This was the Delta Premium Select Cabin, arranged in a 232. In front of that is the galley, which is actually quite large on this 747-400. Past that is the business class in the nose, arranged in a 121, same as the upstairs. However, the two seat is only in the one spot. Very unique. Front were the best ones. The seats here in the nose had a slightly forward view because of the curve of the airplane. And you're actually sitting in front of where the pilots sit, on the very front of the nose. These seats are pretty good. There's also a nice video playing about the Delta 747-400 and how they moved it from the Atlanta airport over here to the museum site. It was very interesting, but it was a long video, so don't expect it to be left in full. By far the most incredible thing had to be the scale of this 747. These pictures maybe help show some scale. It's incredibly huge. Then we have this other galley area right here in the center. The seats which go into the economy cabin. Looking out onto the wing here. But on a 747, you can get upstairs. Climbing this set of stairs has to be the number one thing I looked forward to about going on the 747. Once upstairs, business class was arranged just the same way as in the nose, in a 1-1 configuration. Lufthansa's 747s upstairs are in a 2-2, but this is even better. Oh yeah. Also, I'm learning a new video software, so sorry if this video wasn't perfect. For a more detailed look at this business class seat, check out my video going behind the scenes at Delta. Also, this was the cockpit, but I was told that was the only photo I could take and was not allowed to do any more filming in there. Sorry about that. That right there is where you fly on a 747. That's where you fly a 747, upstairs. 
you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, wishing you blue skies and tailwinds.